Hi, Romans here and welcome to another music review. Today it's going to be Pure Reason Revolution Above Cyrus. Music review. Music review. This is actually the second time I'm covering this band. The first time was two years ago when they released their previous album Yupnia, so if you're interested, go check that review out. Above Cyrus came out like something over a week ago, as of now I've heard it five times, so before we dive into the review, just want to describe the album a little bit for you. There are some atmospheric post-rock-like sections that are very melancholic, kind of reminiscent of Anathema, and these are mixed with like really heavy guitar-driven riff-based sections, kind of reminiscent of the heavier Porcupine Tree mixed with some ghost. And on the previous album, if I remember correctly, it's been two years since I listened to it, they did it only occasionally. I think there were only a couple of the tracks on the album where they went really heavy. And I was always hungry for more. I wanted them to do that more often. On this album, they do that in every track. So every song in a way has these big dynamic peaks where you go from this really slow, soft sections to like this in your face riff based parts. And probably the best way I can describe those riffs is like Psycho from Muse. You know, that simple, pentatonic based but very catchy riff. Also one of the things that makes this band unique is that there are two lead singers, a male and a female singer. The female singer seems to be more in the role of a backing vocalist on this album. If I remember correctly, Yupnia had much more prominent female lead vocals. Okay, so everything I've talked about is pretty well demonstrated by the opening track, Our Prison, which is just something over three minutes long and is actually only one of the two songs with such a short running time. Considering that there are only seven tracks on this album, it's quite long, clocking in at around 45 minutes. So in Our Prison we have this post-rock beginning, then we go into that heavy riff and then we've got like this melancholic slower sections mixed with the heavier ones. New Kind of Evil is eight and a half minutes long song. It's more laid back and it has a very reminiscing atmosphere, especially when it starts. There's a nice ambient section before it gets heavy and even a fuzzy guitar solo that kind of brings Jack White to mind. The second of the shorter tracks is Phantoms, which I really really like, one of my favorite tracks on the album. I love the danceable groove mixed with some electronics and a really good melody. Personally, I prefer the first chorus because the second chorus arrangement-wise and instrumentally is much more in tune with the rest of the album. Certain danceability, if that's the word, and airiness is lost. Cruel Deliverance is slow and somber. Again, we have an ambient mid-section before it gets heavy, and this is probably a type of a song that wouldn't have any heavy section on a previous album. The epic of this album is Scream Sideways, over 10 minutes long song, and there's just a lot of stuff happening here. It has an ambient opening with vocals that have a little bit of that gospel touch. I like how spacey this song is, there are great textures. We get into some cool riffing then as expected, and the actual singing starts only at around 4 minutes. This is more in the neo-proc style, and I really like this sort of a break we get where this like electronics is mixed with some vocals. This is kind of like how Queen would sound today, I guess. Before we continue, just a little reminder, I made these reviews from a viewpoint of a musician as I'm a singer, songwriter and a bass player for my own group Jakobay. Heavy program without guitars but with saxophone, you're gonna wanna check it out. All of the links to my debut album are in the description of this video below. The second album will drop this year. Then we've got a bit of a funky section, then there's a piano section and then it ends heavily. So this track 
has a lot of stuff going on. That butterfly is around seven minutes long. Again, we've got that vocal-like intro. Then it kicks off with heavy riffs. I really like some electronic sounds here. I think that they are using a very simple square wave synth and it's just very basic but very effective sound. The final track is Lucid, again kind of in tune with the rest of the album, it has that post-rockish opening. I do like the mid-section that's pretty tense. I think this is an album of really big contrasts. You know, these heavy in-your-face sections on one hand and these melancholic slower ones on the other one. Not to mention the actual songwriting where the album feels simple enough upon the first couple of listenings that you're like, okay, I kind of get what's going on, but the songwriting is appreciated more upon revisited listenings and it's definitely a record you gotta give a lot of spins to actually appreciate, but it's not that difficult to get into, if it makes any sense. There are definitely a lot of things on this record that are inspiring for me and that I want to try in future with my own music, so that's always a great plus. Have you heard this album already? If you have, you can let me know whether you agreed or disagreed with me. If you are a Pure Reason Revolution fan, you can let me know how well do you think it compares to their previous albums, maybe which one is your favorite one. All of the links where you can follow me are in the description of this video below, along with the link to my Spotify playlist, which I'm updating every two weeks. I guess there's a lot of great stuff you can discover there, so go check it out. If you like this review, don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe. You can check out my own original music, my live performances, my worst to best series and quite a lot of other reviews, reaction videos and whatnot as well. Thanks a lot for watching.